Hi and welcome to today's lesson on the factorization of polynomials. Those of you who are being taught by me. Wow, I think we've got the point now, don't you, Darren? Yeah, I'm pretty sure too, but I'm going to do it anyway. Those of you who are being taught by me, there are the questions I would very much enjoy you doing on factorizing polynomials. Why? Because this stuff is so important. If you are just watching along, thanks very much. Good to see you. Spread the word. I'm here every day. We're going to recap. So in the past lessons, in the past lessons, what is with the accent? In the past lessons on polynomials, we have looked at the following. What polynomials are? And remember, polynomials are just things with x to the 4s, x to the 3s, x squared, x's. It can be any of those, all of those, none of those. You can have x to the 5s, x to the 6s, anything with those long. How we can divide them. Oh yeah, do you remember division? Remember there were three ways of being able to do it? and why we would want to divide them, and in which case we skim that surface. So if you remember, we need to be able to draw pretty accurate sketches of functions. When we had quadratics, it was great because we could actually, you know, use the T method or the, oh, what was it? The T method, the cross method, uh, completing the square, the uh, quadratic equation to help us basically find this point here and this point here. Because of the symmetry of a quadratic, we could then use that information to help us find this point here. And if there had any point where it crossed on the y-axis, we could find we could find that as well. Okay, so that was great. That was all good for quadratics. That's actually true for all polynomials, all graphs. We must, must, must be able to draw these things. Find x-axis intercepts, turning points, y-axis intercepts, the general shape of the equation. So so far, as I say, quadratics aren't always a thing. We need to deal with cubics and quartics and whatever else. Sorry. So we need to make sure that for every single graph we ever draw, we make sure that we have x-axis intercepts, y-axis intercepts, turning points, and the general shape of the graph. Do a quick recap. Division of polynomials is really, really important. Why? Let's go back again to quadratics. We like our quadratics to be in the form of two linear factors. That's why we factorize it, so that we have something like x plus 3 and x minus 2. We have two linear factors. Why do we have two linear factors? Because it's a quadratic, because the chances are it could cross in two places. We would then go on and we would use the null factor law to say that x is equal to minus 3 and x is equal to 2. They are my two crossing points. They are my two factors. Uh, so yes, those are my two factors. So we need to be able to find ways of dividing polynomials to give us these linear factors. We said there were three ways to be able to divide polynomials. Long division, synthetic division, and equating coefficients. Lots of people always ask me, well, which is the best way of doing it? And actually, it varies depending on the question. Most times, I like synthetic division. It's quick, it's funky, it's awesome. Thank you very much. Equating coefficients, if you've got nothing else to do for an evening, you've got no friends, nowhere to go, no life, and you've caught up with Fortnite, then actually knock yourself out with equating coefficients. But the ones I tend to use the most, synthetic division followed by long division. Here's an example. Let's do a quick recap. And firstly, I'm going to do synthetic division. Synthetic division. Write the coordinates. Uh, sorry, write the coefficients. 1, 3, uh, 2, and 1. Draw a box. Someone said this was also called the box method. I thought it was awesome. There's a 2. So the first one just gets copied down. Anytime I write something in this bottom row, I multiply it by that 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. Anything I write in here, I add, and that gives me 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Add those two together, gives me 12. 12 times 2 is... What is 12 times 2? 24. And add them gives me 25. This, if you remember, is my remainder. And these are my no new coefficients. So I can now say that x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 is exactly the same as x minus 2, because that was my divisor, multiplied by my quotient, which is x squared plus 5x plus 12, plus any remainder, which is 25. Or I can write it in a different way and say that x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, all divided by x minus 2, is equal to my quotient x squared plus 5x plus 12 uh, plus 25 on x minus 2. All right. 
I, to be honest with you, prefer this. It actually makes it much more sense because this is my divisor, this is my quotient, and this is my remainder. Uh, again, I'm not gonna show you um, equating coefficients, but I'll show you long division, and hopefully we'll get the same answer. And if not, I've gotta re-record all this again. X cubed plus three X squared plus two X plus one divided by X minus two. So what do we do? First divided by the first. So this X cubed divided by X gives me X squared. Anytime I write something on the top, I stop and then I multiply back on the front. So X times X squared gives me X cubed and X squared times minus two gives me minus two X squared. Draw a line and take them away x cubed minus x cubed goes, which is why we do it, that's awesome. My plus 3x squared minus minus 2x squared would give me 5x squared. Done that, <clears throat> drag down the next term. Start again. First term, 5x squared divided by x gives me 5x. Have I written something on the top? I should go, go, we start again. So that multiplied by the divisor gives me 5x squared minus 10x. Take them away. Do they cancel out? I should go, go, thank you very much. Plus 2x minus minus 10x is 12x. And pull down the next term of plus one. And guess what? Oh yes, we start again. So 12x divided by x gives me plus 12. Have I written something on the top? Yup. Multiply by what's on the front. So 12x minus 24. Take them away. They cancel. And lo and behold, there we go again. So, do I get what I started with? My remainder is 25. Did I get that before? I got 25 before. And did I get that my quotient was x squared plus 5x plus 12? I did indeed. So once again, if I wanted to, and I'm not gonna take any more time to do that, I could do it. And I don't know about you, but synthetic division all the way for me for that one. But a word of warning, synthetic division only works beautifully. It still works, but it only works beautifully when the coefficient of x is one. You can still do it for two x minus five, for example, it works, but uh, you have to do another stage uh, once you get the coefficients, these ones here, you have to do a different stage. But I, I have not yet understood a way to do it, to do something like x squared minus one. So if ever you have to divide by x squared minus one, for example, I don't know how to make synthetic division do that, right? Maybe you do, awesome if you do, but it's beyond the scope of this video. Right, so what we noticed in above, uh, sorry, and let's move this down, is that actually doing that division, we have a remainder. The remainder was 25. Now, because this divisor does not go in a whole number of times, it's not a factor. And just go back to basic numbers. If I look at the number 36, what are the factors of 36? Well, we're looking at the numbers that divide in a whole number of times. One, two, three, four, six, uh, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 18, and 36. I think that's right. Is that all of them? Yeah. 6, 12, 18. No, no, I've missed one. 4, it must be 9. 9, 18, 27, 36. 9. That's slightly awkward. Now, all of these divide into 36 with no remainder. Hence, they're called a factor. Because we've got this remainder of 25, then we can say quite specifically that x minus 2 is not a factor. The remainder theorem basically turns around and describes the case where we divide a polynomial by a linear factor and there's a, main, a remainder. Whoopee flipping do, there we go, I've divided a polynomial, this one here, by x minus 2, I've got a remainder, I've just used the remainder theorem. Uh, okay, uh, that's a lot of work to find a remainder. Well, as it turns out, there's a quicker way. Really? Oh yes. If I actually put x equals 2 into that same equation, look what happens. So I'm just going back. I'm sorry, I'm flicking up and down. So if you've got sort of motion sickness, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. Same equation here. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Did I have minus 1 there? Plus 1. No, I did. I had plus 1. Oh, come on, Darren. Don't second guess yourself. Whoa, come on. Play, play, play. Now, if you remember, we were dividing that by x is minus 2. 
Now remember, I, generally speaking, for that to be a factor, we would use the null factor law and we would have this, this intermediate step, we would have then actually rearranged that to have x equals two. Oh, hold on a moment, x equals two. Oh, interesting. So when we divide by x minus two, we can put x equals two into my equation. If I was dividing by x minus three, I'd put x equals three in. But we still don't know why we're doing it. Let's just check. So I'm gonna put two into this equation and I get two cubed plus three lots of two squared plus two lots of two plus one. Two cubed is eight, uh, th two squared is four plus uh, times by three is 12 plus four plus one, that's 20, O-M-G. OMG, 25, 25, mind blown. That seemed a lot easier, thank you very much. Why, because if you've forgotten already, uh, 25, the remainder was 25. I did all that work with synthetic division and all it actually turned out was, I just needed to rearrange my factor. So I just needed to rearrange my divisor and put it in and it got the same answer. That's ridiculous. What about this situation here? Does it work with two X plus one? Yes. Just always do 2x plus 1 equals 0. So I know 2x is equal to negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1 half. In this situation, I'm going to try and find the remainder when I put x equals 1 half into this bracket. Right, so, um, ooh, so I'm going to do p of minus 1 half is equal to minus 1 half cubed minus 2 lots of minus 1 half plus four, or well, minus a half cubed. When you cube something, you cube the top number and cube the bottom number. So that's minus one on eight, thank you very much. Minus two times uh, minus a half is definitely gonna be a plus, and it turns out one plus the four. So I have five minus one over eight, which gives me four and seven eighths. Oh, this stuff is joyous. So the question I need to ask is, is two X plus one, this thing here, is it a factor? Uh, no, why is it not a factor? Because I've got a remainder, there you go. So if you wanna know whether there's a remainder, you just divide the polynomial by a linear factor, just follow the steps above. It can also be done backwards, and we love that in maths. Remember what you can do forwards, you can do backwards. So in this situation, you're given an equation, but there's one thing missing. They're trying to say, well, there's this A value. But what it says is when we divide by this linear factor, the remainder is four, so they're giving me my answer. So let's just unpack this. X equals two. It means when I do P of two, that means I'm gonna get two cubed plus two lots of two plus A. Yeah, but I don't know what this P2 is. Yes, you do. You're told that when you put two in, four comes out. So here's your four. Two cubed is eight. Two uh, times two is four plus a, so I get four is equal to eight, nine, ten, well actually a cancel of four here, cancel of four here, take away eight from both sides, and making life easier, a actually equals minus eight. This stuff is so powerful. Um, factor theorem. Yeah, I could spend another 15 minutes talking about this, but I think we've got the idea that when you divide a linear factor in, and it comes out with a remainder, it's not a factor. So if it comes out with no remainder, hey, mind blown, it is a factor. Yes, that's exactly what all this stuff is. So uh, if it's a factor, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If it's a factor, we're actually finding these x-axis intercepts. Remember, go back to my quadratic once again. When we factorize, we're finding these values here. We're putting things like x plus three, x minus two equals zero. This is factorizing. We're putting it e to zero. So you can only factorize if it's a factor. Oh yeah, this is so exciting. So example four, let's see how we're gonna use it. Show that x plus one is a factor. They're even telling you it's a factor. So I'm gonna sit and go, it's, it's a factor, it's a factor. What do I need? Well, x plus one equals zero. So it's asking me to put in x equals minus one. So let's just check, minus one cubed, minus four lots of minus one squared, plus minus one, plus six. So minus one cubed is minus one. Uh, minus four times minus, minus one squared is one. Uh, it's gonna be minus four, minus one, plus six. Don't really know why I put that in brackets, so we'll just put that back down to minus one. Minus one, minus four, minus one is minus six, add six. OMG again.
There you go, ladies and gentlemen, by that simple process of putting minus one into there, I've just shown that that is a factor. Yay! So what does that mean? Well, yeah, bearing in mind I'm trying to find these crossing points. Yeah, I then got to do polynomial division again. So, uh, yeah, what does that mean? Well, uh, x plus one is a factor, so I could go one, minus four, one, and six. Why? Because I'm just taking my coefficients. There's minus one, so that becomes one. One times minus one is minus one. Four plus minus one is minus five. That becomes five. That becomes six. That becomes minus six. And lo and behold, zero again. Now the good news here is it's zero. So I can now rewrite my cubic, my x cubed, minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 is equal to my divisor, x plus 1, times by my new coefficients, which are given by this, which is x squared minus 5x plus 6. Oh, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer, but do I have my three linear factors? No, I don't. But I do know that this is a quadratic and I've got more than enough experience to be able to help me factorize the quadratic. And so I could continue, I'm not going to, and find the rest of the uh, crossing points, sketch this beautiful graph, and life will be good. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about factorization of polynomials. Did we really? Well, we actually did, but we started by talking about this remainder theorem first. If it's a remainder, or rather, if it's got a remainder, it's not a factor. If it is a factor, we can factorize, polynomial divide, 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 and find everything we need. All right, once again, 16 minutes and 50 seconds. I'm trying so hard to keep these under 15 minutes and failing miserably. If you've enjoyed it, thanks very much. Subscribe. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S, guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.